CEO, the managing director, BJ Global Limited, and she's also a career guidance counselor. Good morning. Good morning, Joyce. And welcome once again. Thank you. Uh, it's great having you both. Uh, last week was a great discussion, mm -hmm. and then today I believe it's going to be greater. Um, let's start up looking at career development. Mm -hmm. um, I want us to start this way. I want us to look at a clear cut difference between a career and a profession. Okay, so that um, people would be able to differentiate between what, when you talk about career development, they don't mistake it as um, developing your profession. Mm. So um, let me start with you, Aunt Janice, today. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Joyce. Yeah, um, when we talk about career development, um, we know it will start with career identity. The development aspect will have to do with setting a goal on the career identified and planning and strategizing on how to enhance it and making progress. So the difference between um, a profession and a career sure. will not be much in terms of the fact that you will need a profession and then moving on from it, how to manage the profession will be within a career. And we always say that career practices take place in an organization. So you need a profession, you find an organization, practice the uh, profession in it, and that is career. Okay. Yeah. And Bernard, mm -hmm. you want to give us your own view <laughs> on the, the differences? Okay. And looking at career and profession, even from the word profession, you profess, that like you mm -hmm. confess that you are doing this. So most, most of, of the time, we identify certain things as a profession. I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm an architect, so that these are professions and career, but what do you do actually in in your job field that becomes your career. So the one one you got distinction between a career and a job. There's a thin line between a career and a job. But I'm uh, looking at a career as uh, as things you do. So you could your your profession can still be your career. Okay. Whatever you do, if you're a lawyer, it's, it's still your career. What what you uh, the challenge in which you 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 let, let me use the word carry out your uh, activities then becomes your career. So what do you do is your career. Okay. That. Okay. All a right. profession is no, known tax for that. All right. From I'm gathering from what uh, both of you are saying in terms of career development, that means that ongoing something you start somewhere and um, you climb, you build it, you build mm -hmm. on it. Um, and Jen, as you made mentioning of identifying your career, that is the first step. What other steps do we need to look at? The next step will be goal setting. Okay. Once you identify. <coughs> what path you want to tow, you will need to set up a goal that's at the end of this career I would want to finish up maybe as a senior executive in an organization or as a specialist let's say a, a top executive engineer maybe an engineering director so if you want to end as a director you start as a trainee engineer and the goal is the directorship so you will need to set this goal first and then we come up with plans personal development plans on how to progress and make sure that you're going on the right direction and at the end you will get to that goal. And in these plans you have to develop tactics or strategies in order to ensure that the plan is carried out because uh, if not it becomes a paper line somewhere. Sure. And in these plans and strategies we have several things to consider in, in the process, some of which will have to do with your personality again to ensure that, let's say, if you are an introverted person, then it means that you will be more of a specialist in the engineering field or in, if it's an HR or whatever field you have chosen, rather than um, the management side of it. Because in the management side, there will be the need for image building. It calls for extrovertism. So you need to check these personalities and then implement your strategies according to it according to what your personality is. And we would also advise that it should come with a combination of the strategies. There are some people who are very good on the job and they think that is it. They will do their job, you can't talk to them. They're, they're just closed to what they want to do when you're trying to add an information or give an idea or give them something else to do, they don't want to listen. They know it all. They know mm. it all. Mm. So you need to kind of be balanced. You may also need to monitor this over the process. Okay. And we can talk more about that okay. as we I go. I realize you were smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at, and we want, we want to pick it in a corporate setting and uh, how to then develop the steps to rise up 
it, one depending on your organization to certain organization you can rise you have a limit of how high you can rise in that organization so you also know your corporate settings which which people are you working in how high can you rise your rank your rankings then you look at your values use your goals what you mentioned so you you can rise so high in every organization too then you they comes into we'll, we'll look at career switching or how to then do self development process to help yourself so if it is a limit or maximum how you can reach in the organization what do you do next what do you do after that so that's also very important to the individual then i look in my organization this these are the levels i can rise or if my degree or my master's is a level so then based on those things you work on your value system your educational system and i need to improve one okay how do i need to improve education wise okay on the job training or whatever you need to add to that to better yourself then you can then rise if not you'll be stuck in there so the organization setting is very important to help you develop and rise up and get another steps okay, okay. so to even add that, um to add to that organizations should set up systems for um, employees career development in the sense that the development can be either or horizontal or vertical horizontal um, aspect of it will have to do with rising through the ranks okay. now in modern organizations some of them have lean hierarchies or flats so you do not necessarily need to be rising up in order to see you are being successful in your career or not the success can also be measured on a vertical and on a horizontal line in the sense that in every organization the hiring of the people is just the beginning from the moment the person is hired up to the end where the person is released or to the release of the person in whatever form um, comes with different career strategies that can be employed to make the person more useful to the organization and to themselves afterwards and so we recruit the pe people there should be induction there should be ongoing training and support for the person career development um, services should be available to the people and this can be internal or external there should be appraisal where the person sees that they're doing well in every appraisal and rewards changes over time so when you are able to check how you have progressed from when you were recruited to where your reward is for now you know your entry it changes over time through different methods that are, were set, in, set up by the organization. So this can happen within an organization and we should be able to look out for them. Okay, and, and let's take a look at organizations who um, have not put all these measures in place. So in, 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 in one hand, you can say that it's going to stifle the employee's mm -hmm. career development. But as you said, um, this person takes up the initiative to better him or herself but you still don't have the environment within the organization to make good use of um, what you have learned although the um, organization hasn't given you that opportunity to build yourself up but you have taken that opportunity upon yourself to do that and you still don't have the opportunity to give it out what do you do in the sense yeah, that, that is that that could be very frustrating however it's because you're seeking for personal development and empowerment your first goal is achieved because you've been able to empower yourself as an individual. You become better at the job, whatever you're doing. There will be uh, success. You could measure that as being successful in that field, expanding, reaching your maximum heights in all aspects. But however, when you look at uh, there's no mechanisms, schemes in the work to help you rise or to, to put those initiatives in place, one, you can also always suggest uh, to, uh, to management in any way possible. And after some time, if it's not possible, I think it's, it's possible in any organizational setting. But here, here's, there are two things to this. One, if you see that you've developed yourself beyond your level and you've reached your maximum, and you can help your colleagues to achieve their, their goals, objectives every day, and even exceed all that level, you are now a better person. Now, when you can maybe your, your, your company's competitor, you become a, a person that other companies will be looking out for or seeking. So you have a better chance of switching career at any level. If it's the same organization that you think when you move there, you can be promoted or you can better use your skill set to help the organization, then you're helping yourself. So okay. first of all, you, you initiate that, okay, we, can we do these things? You suggest you put, put things in management, okay, I think we can also go this way. After a long while, 
you can also look at for career switch or change or to help because you want to become a better person and put put in place what you also learn to help not only the organization your, yourself and people in society All right. so i and think that would be really what do you say about that yeah what i want to say is the career development activities do exist in organizations the first one i mentioned was even hiring you is your next career step because you have to make sure that for every offer you accept you have already determined that that is what will take you to your next level and that is why you accepted it so giving you that opportunity to join the organization is a first career development a career move and then moving on from there every organization normally wants to make the best of you and they know that it has to start with them giving you a proper orientation or induction and they normally will do that it is another step and we do have mentorship programs that organizations do have they might not call it you know mentorship but they, when you join they can give you to a senior person and say you are working directly under this person and this person will show you everything you need to know about your work until you don't need that service it is a way of giving you a development in the process companies also sometimes give their people out on second mint to go and work in another operation in another office in with a client and all that these are all developmental opportunities that they provide to the people newsletters newspapers that are bought into companies every day and you know all materials made available some people don't even read mm. and all the information is in the company Right. They are all developmental opportunities okay. that are made available to us. And career counseling, that can be internal or external. That's an aspect I may say it may not be really there because it is similar to companies offering health um, services where they have facilities around medical services for their staff. You can have a career service for your staff. So they also have the tickets or the, the cards or the subscription. When they have any issue, they go there independent discussions mm -hmm. and get to discuss with their further study, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. And some companies also give formal education. And you will agree with me that we know a lot of people who say, oh, I'm on further studies because my company paid for me. Certainly. Or they've given me a steady leave. They've given me an education leave to write my exams, one week leave. These are all developmental opportunities. Okay. So they do exist, but sometimes people do not know that let's understand the company's policies on how the entire operation runs sometimes they have an employee manual or employee handbook but we don't go into it to find out what the company has for us it's so much that they might not be able to tell everything but the information is normally somewhere within the organization and we should just be a bit more inquisitive, inquisitive. and proactive yeah. Yeah. and look for the act uh, what is available for us okay yeah. Meaning the, the employee needs to do much. The employee needs to do much. I think sometimes they are there. They might not be up to date or, you know, just all that we want. But I think I see most of them I going think on. Most employees are being lazy. <laughs> and then that, that's it. Okay. Now we're talking about um, success, success and career development. What would you de determine as um, career success? I think I know someone career said. success. I would look at it in two ways, in terms of looking at how you started, you know, up to where you are. Now, if you start in one company, we just need to know something that companies, hopping from one job to another is not good. And so um, if you have been able to stay, to be a bit stable in one area, you would have developed a lot of skills and experience. You can't remain in a company for a year, for two years, three years, and be the same. You go there every day, meet targets, meet deadlines, and impressing everybody, then you might know that you, you just do not know what you would have done to yourself, but you have transformed. Mm -hmm. So stability in a job, you can use that to assess your own career um, success. And moving from one job to another will be another yardstick to measure whether you are successful or not. If I've been an HR manager or um, a senior marketing officer for two to four years, I would move to another company because they're paying me more for the same position. Okay. In the first year, a person learns the job. Second year, you know how to do it. Third year, you get used to it and almost getting board in the fourth year you are ready for your next level okay. so if at this within this range you've moved to another position 
the same position in another company, judge yourself whether you have been successful or not. Because the money might not be the many years. If you searched properly, because job search helps in this, if you do a proper search, you should be ready for a, another role, and that will give you a higher remuneration with the higher level role. Because then moving on from there, you're going upper. Mm -hmm. And it's better that way to check how you're succeeding. So you can easily check success by the movement and the organizations you choose to join. Choose to join, okay. Um, um, Bernard. Uh, I'll say that success, the term success in itself means different things to different people. So that in an organization or as an individual, when you want to measure your career success or career path, uh, I would say one of the things too that, that that you can always check is your personal development. Since you, you, you roll this work, how have you developed yourself? If you're able to do this work within an hour, now within an hour, how many can you do production-wise? Okay, how, how can you do all this? So within a year, within six months, if you're not measuring yourself against yourself, your progress, your work schedule, your commitment, your tax, and you're not rising, it means you are not growing, it means you are not becoming successful at what you do. Because you can't use the same time and hours to do the same job over the years. One, you sharpen your skills at work so that if you're working, developing yourself, you're able to do the work effectively and efficiently, then you are, you are becoming successful. Then she mentioned that, okay, are you rising up in the levels of the rankings or are you also helping your other colleagues on the same horizontal level? So these, these two things can be measured by, so okay, you become a successful person at work and also are you meeting company goals and deadlines? Then you are a successful person. The next thing you might want to look at, and it's people who might want to look at the funds coming in. Okay, that okay. I will because we need to pay bills, we need to do all this, so I need, I need a lot of money. So that if I'm not getting that money that I need, it means I'm not being successful. That, is, that can be a hindrance to progress as your personal uh, success. The third thing I always consider in job and career success is this is the seed of fulfillment. Do you find a sense of fulfillment, that peace within the job environment? If not, it means you are missing a bit somewhere. That is why it's always need to, you always need to do a career developmental progress before the work on the job and you go for counseling and all that to help you that. Is this what you really wanted to do? If there's fulfillment, and I'll say that's the greatest level of success anyone can find in any job. Okay. Fulfillment. Yes. Okay. Um, right, let's look at some interest and personality types. You know, we all have different personality types. We hold our own values. Um, and objectives in life. Can all these affect one's um, career development? Mm, yeah. Yeah. E exactly. Now, that certain personality types are better fits or cut for certain jobs. But I would say that in this age and this era, uh, I will use the word that talent is not just enough for any field. That be, if, if I have a physique for sports and, and, uh, and somebody doesn't have, and the person is able to work on him or himself, the person can be better fit. But naturally, people are fit for a certain kind of job. You have the corporate settings, you have this. But this is the key thing for uh, personality types and values. It's about working on yourself, about developing yourself, your skills and developing. I always use this example, the what Malcolm Gladwell says, concerning a 10,000 hour theory, that if you work harder on yourself for 10,000 hours, that is minimum of like 10 years or five years, you become an expert in your chosen field. So that if uh, I'm not cut for that particular job, but I work every day, meticulously on the work, hard work, go extra, go e early, stay extra hour, work hard on myself, I become successful than a person who is cut for the job. Okay. So one personal development still on the work, you will be to help yourself better than any other person. Okay, and Janice, let's quickly look at some of the hindrances to career development. Yeah, um, regarding hindrances to career development, um, your previous question will come in. Okay. The values, sure. especially. Um, when you neglect the values, it brings a hinder. I'm giving the scenario, I'll give the scenario of um, a lady who joined, who is a Christian, okay. and joined an alcoholic mm. beverage company. Mm. She is a senior brand marketer. So yes, she knows she wants to market brands, but perhaps food, or some other areas that she would be more comfortable with would work better for her than others. So without you know, taking these factors into consideration, she joined this company and being a brand manager, you will be given a company vehicle. 
with the company vehicle, it was branded. branded yeah. Anytime she sits in the vehicle, then she begins to hear questions inside of her. What are you mm. branding? Mm. What are you selling? Is this for you? Why are you doing this? Mm. And all that. And she had to quit the job. Now, with this, if you are not able to manage it very well, do you quit immediately? Or you, you start looking again and did you were you ready for a re recruitment again, mm -hmm. process again? And so the values re really help to make sure that you cut things very short and move faster. Okay. And we also take note of what can hinder you will be solid educational qualifications. Mm -hmm. For every area of work you choose, every profession or whatever, you need solid a, a solid education, a minimum of a first degree a minimum of a first degree, and even if you want to specialize or go into management, that also determines what postgraduate or master's level education you okay, would require. Because first degree is quite general. And so if you decide to ch go into specialist way, it's good to have a master's degree in that area to specialize. And then a management degree, not necessarily an MBA, but just any management degree for the management. And if you want to even work in the executive level, then it also calls for further qualifications. Yes. And if you don't do these things, you will sit and think you're progressing, but it can be slow. You can go really slow. Okay. Um, Bernard, um, to mm. run up um, on this particular discussion, mm. what advice would you have for employees out there who are really not thinking about developing themselves or they think about them? Okay, I have a job. Let me stay on the job. Mm. Within this next year, I'll be promoted. What advice do you have for them? Uh, I have to uh, some few things. Uh, one is, if you don't change, change will change you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can think that you can be at the same level all these years. Now, one major thing that is shifting global change is technology. I will emphasize on that. That if you don't, w w when uh, the PC system started in place and those using the typewriter uh, where when it so comes that how why do i need the computer for all this most of them were phased out because they didn't learn they didn't adapt to change so companies individuals you need to adapt to change first technology is moving very fast speed of light so you need to adjust how fast can i use technology to enhance what i'm doing if not within the next year somebody somewhere in asia and india will place your work within the click Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to say and something yes, about that. My, yeah. my message to um, the employed is regarding professional ethics. We will need to ensure that we are practicing our professions ethically. Okay. Let's find out what our company's code of ethics and code of conduct are, and let's identify and also be conversant with our individual professional codes of ethics and abide by them. Wow, it's been a great um, discussion once again with my guest. Um, that's um, Bernard Kelvin Clive. He's an author and he also owns a company called Dreamatrix IT Training Company. And then I also had with me um, uh, Mrs. Janice Tego, a managing director of BJ Global Limited. She's also a career guidance counselor. Thank you so much. It's always great having you giving us all the stuff um, we've been talking about. Um, um, how to achieve career success through career development, the role of the employed. And next up, we have the newspaper review segment, You Don't Go Away.